And of course, uh, of course, the design put for this is a macro level city. Macro level city means if I were to zoom out like this, you could kind of see the individual aspects of the city, how they all come together. There's a clear skyline with the downtown. You can see the beach area right there with the sand on the beach. A lot of the low density that surrounds the downtown due to how the citizens usually would leave their city to work in a higher paying job in the downtown. That's how real life works. So, you know, art imitates life, right? So we tried to do something like that. And that's really how we did our city. Now, of course, this is the industrial area that we're still working on. Eventually, we're going to get oil pumping rigs over here. And then uh, we're going to have oil and ore. We're going to also have a quarry over here mining up the ore in the area. We'll have to do that later on, though. We're trying to level up the uh, industry so that we get the larger assets. But once we get that, we'll probably get to work on that. But uh, that's what we have so far. There is going to be some plans of having a train station back here, which is why the uh, railroads are discontinued for now. Eventually, it's going to slip behind. This area, I cut through so that I can make the quarry area. We're going to separate this into a valley, so that it's going to be like two hills, and then the valley in between is the highway. I'm not going to be zoning everything down here. I'm probably going to slip the road uh, railroad right here through like that as well. And then we're not going to really touch the side. It's really just going to go upstairs and just kind of be. I actually redid this highway completely. Because I didn't like how... So the dev of this game, when he made the map, his interchanges look like this. Nothing lines up. Everything's at a different height. It's jank. I don't even know who, who made this map. So I had to redo some of the exits already. Like this one I had to redo. This is completely flat with a flat overpass. Great transition, completely parallel. This goes uphill. We try to make it so that you can't even notice the incline. Try to smooth it out. And then once we got to the edge, I can't delete this portion, so I can't change this. So I had to just curve my roads into the existing roads. And you know, it is what it is. You can't do that much sometimes, but uh, you gotta live with that. What's up, Dino Don? How are you? How you be just trying to stay cool, man. It's getting hot. It's getting hot in here. The amount of detail you think of in this game, my brain hurts. I'm sorry, Dino Dons. Sorry to uh, give you the headaches. You should make a city centered around a huge industrial area. That's actually easy. <laughs> That's actually easy. I mean, I, I, I could do that. It's a uh, weird centerpiece, though. I will say that. It's a weird centerpiece. It's possible, though. I can see how it would work, too. You would basically run a circle, but you would run like a uh, eight-way setup. So you have a cross, right? And then you would have your round. And then you would have your highway setup that feeds in like this. And then this is on a separate round. That, you know, because you, you would have a centerpiece with industry, you would have highway surrounding that centerpiece because it is industry. So I already see how that would work. <laughs> but I see you over there, Dino Dons. I see you over there. Really nice, clear, uh, clear, carefully designed city. It's nice to, uh, it's nice to hear that you uh, plan enrich, redo grid blocks. They do a little boring and lifeless at the moment, but based on the quality of what you're done so far, I uh, look forward to seeing uh, them improve, but yeah. Thank you for the flyover. Really inspiring city. Yeah, man. Glad to be able to uh, give you guys some ideas. Help you guys out. Maybe, uh, you know, you could take an idea and run with it. But yeah, just trying to do our best. Right now, though, we're working on this part. And uh, yeah, working on the mountainside for that. I, ah, oh, man. So right here, this is very inhabitable right here. It is. But I'm thinking I just don't inhabit this area. It feels weird, man. We could easily add like four or five streets back here. But I feel like it's a bad idea. They don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. All right, so bring that down to 10%. Pull that back slightly. Nice, nice. This comes down to here stays low and then this part
push that back. All right, so the line is about smooth. You have a really strong road network, really nicely done, but I'm not a fan of car-centric cities, but I know this game makes them somewhat essential. But do you have a subway system? Do you plan on much of a way of paths, bike lanes, public transit? Typically, I actually have a lot of fail saves, so I actually build in a certain way that allows for a lot of pedestrian pathing. So what I play is I line up my main city grid with one space gaps like this, and they line up with the other side of the main route so that I could do this. This is what you would call a sky network, right? Where you would have a pedestrian pathway taking it from one side to the other. I actually do a lot of this design along my main streets, and the pattern I do is something like this. Right, so you would come in with a bridge, and then you have a decline to this side on the other half of the bridge right here. You decline the other side. And bam! By doing that, you have good pathing. I have citizens already taking this instead of crossing the street. And I have enough spacing so that it doesn't ruin the buildings. I do this a lot if I run into traffic issues and I notice that the cars are being slowed down by the citizens. Now, that's only if I do it I don't do it from the get-go, and the reason being is that you don't see this in real life ever, so I feel like it kind of ruins the realism, right? You don't see these kind of networks for pedestrians to just cross. Now, uh, that's how I do the pavements for the pedestrians. Also, if I were to have a proper grid, something like this, I like to also do the same thing, but what I do is something like this that's really weird. I put a pathing like that, and then I'll make a park right here, like a park life park. And that allows me to make a mini park that zones off of the pedestrian pathway. And then that allows me to, uh, you know, have the citizens get entertainment value without actually like creating a area dedicated for the park zone. So something like if I were to have, I don't have any park life parks though, so I can't show you, but I'd be able to put something like the, uh, the chessboard or maybe the park plaza right here in the corner because it's a four by four and then because that zoning doesn't do anything anyway so i could just utilize it like that and just walk from the pedestrian pathway so it's kind of nice which is uh something i do with the residencies outside of that i typically choose two to three public transits that i utilize in my city almost always though you always have to have the metro it's the strongest public transit so Typically, you always have one of these. And then I usually choose something else along with that. Buses are always, almost always a given. I don't consider buses to be a main public transit due to the capacity and how buses are actually supposed to work in real life. They are not looked at as a way of main transport unless you're doing very local shopping. They're mainly a way to get to the main transport options so you would take buses to get to the metro and then the metro will cover the most amount of distance that's what buses are supposed to do you're not supposed to have buses take you from point a to point b and then have a lot of stops along the way no those styles like that is given that the population's not high enough you can pull that off and the people using the buses in the area but typically you don't want to use buses as the main transit option due to how the game will put a thousand people at one stop and there's nothing you could do about that. So yeah, you kind of have to use buses that way. Yep, I do that kind of race path, snap, yep, yep. There was a university in America that did something like that once. I saw a video on it recently. It was a failure because people didn't like being isolated up in the air. Endless walkways made of uh, ground really dark and gloomy. Yeah, that was another thing. By doing a lot of those pathways like that, it doesn't feel realistic. It feels more like dystopian because of how it's like you see in the future the cyberpunk setups a lot of tall buildings a lot of like raised networks and walking paths and flying cars and it's exactly that you look beneath everything it's all dark and it's all gloomy at the bottom i think i found the problem i was doing that didn't let me progress what was it guito san talk to us about that what was the issue that was stopping you from progressing in the game miss chemical stairs i see you over there thank you for the uh Plugs, appreciate you, Miss Chemical Stairs, and hope you're having a good Mondays. 
What about sinking the main roads a little? More realistic? And then pedestrian bridges are flatter. No, you would never have that due to how when we do it here, it makes sense. But you would never do that for pedestrians to cross. And the reason being is because when we have cities in real life, they're all car centric because that's that's kind of how everyone benefits in the capitalism part of things. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you built a bridge, no one's buying a car. <laughs> and I hate to say that, but that's part of the thought process. Like they think about that stuff, man. Like we could put a bridge there. Yeah, but but no one's going to buy cars now because you can't you can't drive there. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, well, it's just not waste money. They could drive. Let's just put a stop sign there and put a stop line and they just cross the street. Like like a lot of the times, the reason why the way things are in real life are the way they are, it's because of money. But yeah, I see what you're saying with sinking something under to have a flat crossing. But you typically don't want that either. It doesn't really accomplish anything because you're still building a bridge, right? In real life, at the very least, having a road sink under so that you could have a flat bridge is never something you'll have because why not just cross the street? Make a stoplight there so people could cross. That's always going to be the first option. And then the second thing is if you make a bridge anyway, you might as well elevate it because the cost of having a bridge and the cost of elevating that same bridge, it's, it's gonna be very marginal. Like the major cost of building the bridge is what it is from the get-go. I forgot that you can level up residential and make money out of it and fix taxes. I only had residential tax at 12. Dude, 12 is what you actually set it to, Goyito-san. You usually don't put it higher than that. What'd you put it up to, dude? What was the tax percentage that you settled on? Blundo, what's good? I see you over there. We're uh, expanding the city right now, trying to do some uh, side of the hill action into this area. Redid the highway, made a single point urban setup. Otherwise, not too bad though. How you doing, Mr. Blundo? How is the week? How is the Mondays? Preparing the harbor? Yeah, the harbor, man. Cargo harbor. Oh, you left it at the default eight. Yeah, you lose money like that. I forget to do that from time to time too. But yeah, you gotta set up your taxes at 12% as soon as you can. All right, so this is pretty good. I'm gonna have a safety save. I like this. I will take it. All right, so why I saved was because I need to make some mountains or hills right here. So we'll take this height. I'll pick two spots right here and a little bit closer right here. And then I'll drop this by 20 meters in the middle. So from here, we go like that. Let me undo that. That needs to be smaller. That's not strong enough. There we go. All right, not bad, not bad. Week started strong for me, lots of work. Hopefully that means that you don't have that much work at the end of the week. Hope that's the case, Mr. Blundo. Our friend helped me. So uh, right now, I'm just trying to get to the small city. Nice. It's nice, nice. Glad to hear that he was able to help, man. Good stuff, good stuff. Happy that you got that fixed too, man. Able to actually play cities now. All right, so we made our starfish. 75 on a 15%. We got to smooth out the edges of everything we made.
Gotta smooth everything out. Best as we can. Some of the ridges we don't want to keep, but it is what it is. But we need to have our hillside over here. Or at least I want my hillside over here. Not bad. How's the little mamba doing? He is... You can't see him. He's hiding behind a pillow right now. So I don't have the mamba cam on because he's in a very bad position where the camera doesn't pick him up. <laughs> so sadly, you know, the mamba's is... Uh, he's napping. He's doing good. But we can't see him today. I didn't play that much yesterday because of college. I had to do a 3D character and it's a pain. A 3D, huh? I see you over there. Didn't know you were a uh, computer science guy, man. Didn't know you were a computer science guy. That's awesome. Did you know I tried computer science as a major when I was in uni? And I couldn't do it, so I had to switch majors. They don't think it be like it is, man, but it do. And it really do be like that sometimes. It was a sad time when I I, had to, I found out that switch majors. Wasn't making the cut, man. They're like, these too legit games are not too legit. And I was like, ah, shit. It'd be like that, man. It'd be like that. So I want to get some weird ridges. And I think that's going to be the best way to do it. So that it looks like it's a little bit more natural. No mama cam. I could turn it on, but you won't be able to see him. He's literally right behind a pillow. You can't see him at all, man. I'm a video game designer. I see you over there, man. That's awesome, though, man. That's the dream. That's the dream. Oops. Zero five. Here we go. Seventy. Five percent. Smooth out the color a little bit. Push the top. All right, so we want to make it so that during the drive, maybe you see some cars up here, but we want to make it so that it's not apparent that you could see the uh, second, the second setup. So we're driving on the camper van. Minding our business, we're driving downhill, and then we're like, eh, it's cool, man. We got we got lights. We see what's going on. Hey, is that is that a hill on the side? You know, is that a hill? That's all. Oh, it is a hill. Did I see a road? I don't know, man. We just got some hills on the side, and they think it's gonna be normal. Not bad, not bad. All right, now we gotta make this transition. So I think how this is gonna work is we take the height, we go to here, and then we go here like that, 
and then we could cut this mountain a little bit better. And then we could massage, oops, 100 on a 5%. My brain hurts when I think of it. I'm more at the art side. Oh, I see you over there. Dude, that's still, dude, I don't know, man. So, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen my background picture for my desktop, but it's, it's, I think it's a cool background picture. I'll show you guys in a second if you haven't seen it. But it's uh, for those that do know the picture, it's, it talks about the right brain and left brain. And it's like the left brain, which is what I think I am, very rational, very logical in how I approach things, how I view things, how I make decisions off of things. Like it's all based off of like logic and rationale. And that makes sense. That, that's kind of who I am. Now, the right brain is creativity, it's art, it's uh, whatever you want to be. And I feel like Duko Yito-san, you might be right brain, dude. Nothing wrong with being right brain, but I'm just saying that. Right brain stuff is cool. It's just that, you know, that might be why your brain hurts. <laughs> you guys know the picture I'm talking about, man? Probably no one does, huh? Alright, so we fixed that hill mount. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I actually can't show you guys, goddamn. Because I, I need an alt tab, but I can't alt tab windows. I mean, uh, cities. <laughs> Cid the cities game doesn't alt tab. Damn it, man. But yeah, maybe you're right brain, dude. Nothing wrong with that. It just means that, uh, you know, the art style or the art stuff is kind of your strong suit. I'm going to lighten up this cliff right here. So it's not as dark. That's okay. It makes me want to add more terrain right here. Makes me want to do this. Makes me want to add more stuff up top. To make a better, like, top end cliff. I wouldn't mind doing it, I guess. Because I. I think I could just do something like that. And put the bumps in here as it would have. So you know how there's bumps like that? We're just gonna randomly put some bumps over here in the same style. I'm center rear brain, at least when it comes to owning. What does that even mean? I thought there was only two sides. How did you choose an item not on the menu? I didn't know we have secret menus for the brain, dude. I didn't know we were at in and out I'll see you over there, man. Jack Bull, dude. There's no in and out of Dallas. What are you talking about? This guy ordering animal style fries at Whataburger. You get kicked out in a heartbeat, I imagine. Hey, man, I heard Whataburger has really good chicken sandwiches. Is that true? They have like a really good honey mustard chicken sandwich or something like that. I heard the burgers were all right. The burgers are great, very differently. Okay, interesting.
It's like the difference between Coke and Pepsi. Ah, so it's a subtle difference, but you could tell it apart. Like to the untrained burger eater, they'd be like, this is, this is a burger. But to someone that actually appreciates it, you could tell, huh? Interesting. Different sauces and all. I see, I see. Alright, so those blemishes, we're going to come at it with a little bit of lightening up. Hit them with some makeup. Lighten up the patches. And then it looks like it's kind of all tied together. Cliff side, it gets lower. Should be fine. Then over here, we kind of have hills. We're going to have to put some foliage and trees on top of that. Wouldn't be too bad. All right, now we can actually do the inside, I think. What a burger in and out both kick ass for me. Yo, man. That's cool. Have you ever been to Shake Shack? And then there's also the Smash Burger. There's a couple other places I've heard that are, uh, well, I've had it. It was pretty good then. <laughs> it's pretty good. Not gonna lie. All right, so now we could finish designing the grid up top. So we had this come out, this separates, and we had a weird grid issue due to the spacing. I think this eventually goes just in here. This is a 140, 380, so that's what, a 240? And then this is a 140-140 curve. I'll take that. All right. This could actually lead to like a nature reserve mountain range up here. Wouldn't it be too bad. Yep, solid Texas Roadhouse. Amazing honey rolls. The barbecue out here is next level. Dude, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I love barbecue. I love barbecue, dude. American barbecue is the business. I'm not even kidding. I love barbecue, man. If I had a choice of what to eat for dinner, I think way too often I would just get a full rack of baby back ribs. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, no wrong getting full rack of baby back ribs for dinner. That's delicious. That's a good dinner, dude. And so, I say that, you know, nothing wrong with that decision. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, man. That's just good dinner. I love me barbecue. I love me baby back ribs. I had a, there's a homie from Texas that tells me about the Texas beef that you guys got. You know, the Texas beef, you probably know what that is. You probably had some. But man, I'm a sucker for sweet potato fries, grilled asparagus, and a full rag of baby back ribs with a pitcher of amber ale. I love me my reds. I love me my reds, man. Amber Ale, the business. There's a place out here called Smoke Sessions. Their portions are ridiculous. They have a brisket bloody mirror. What the hell? Doesn't even need to order any more food. Wow, that sounds ridiculous. There's quite a few ranches that provide their own meat to their own burger joints. Oh, that's solid, man straight from farm to the uh, restaurant that's really solid that's kind of the dream you know for lack of better words that's kind of the dream how people will be like dude that's how you get the freshest burgers that taste the best from uh farm to the restaurant also the farmers markets out here are awesome i believe that i believe that All right, so looking at if I were to do a stick figure fill, it would be fine, and we could see how the fill would work. I could instead do an outline setup, which would still be pretty attractive, I believe. You live 30 minutes east of Dallas proper, so I am more in the country, but close enough to be dangerous. So our markets are very different. Oh, interesting, interesting. Dude, 
but 30 minutes east is like nowhere. Like, you're, you're pretty much still in Dallas. <laughs> I went over to Texas, man. And I have family living in DFW. And when I when we stopped by, because I went to visit, they were like, oh yeah, you know, we're we're going home. Okay, cool. 30 minutes later, we get we get back. I'm like, damn, you guys live far away from the airport. Like, no, it's it's, it's, it's close. I was like, that's 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 30 minutes. How's that close? Yeah, it's close. I'm like, hey, we're gonna get dinner. You you wanna come along? I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go to the uh, Super Kmart. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. We drive. It's another like 30, 40 minutes. I'm like, damn, man, that's far. Is it? No, this is the closest. This is the closest grocery store we have to us. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? Why is everything so far away? And it's like, that's kind of just Texas. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, I guess I kind of get it now. But damn, that kind of sucks. <laughs> that kind of sucks, man. You, you got to drive 30 minutes to get anywhere. It's kind of funny, too, at the same time. So when you say 30 minutes, I'm thinking it's, it's really not that bad if it's only 30 minutes. Given how everything's like really far away from uh, everything in Texas. All right. So instead of having this just branch out like that, I think we could also go with a hug the terrain build which is pretty good design. I'm a fan of that. So let's go to see if we could try to pull that off instead. I do think this stays. And I do think we try to go out this way because it kind of lines up with the grid zone both sides. So the easiest thing is do a left hand curve well, it's a right-hand curve, because I'm curving to my right. And just curve out and go straight shot into here. That kind of lines up with the terrain as well. Now, instead, I could go diagonal. But this would be like this, right? Because I want to zone both sides, and then we would change it. Something like that. So we'd have weird curve. That's not that bad. I think we could take that. And then we'll have our curve out happen like here. So it'll curve here to here here to here, here to here, and then have that come off of the round, potentially, yeah, or just curve into here and have it be a uh, small road. So let's delete that. So I think that's not bad. So let's go with a midpoint rule. So that's going to be here 200, 300, uh, shorten the gap. So that's by 100. Right. So this is going to be a 200, 200 setup. Hey, Mia, coming in with the raid. Thank you so much for the raid, Mia. How are you? And of course, welcome on in, you guys. Let me give a shout out to Mia. How was the streams? How was all the things? How was the cities? What were you guys doing today, Mia? How was the city building? What you get done? And how was the stream today? Gray DP, hello, hello. Welcome on in, Mia. Love ya. I see you over there, Mia. How are you? How was the Mondays? How was all the things today? So we could take the 10 point curve. I think I'll take it for now. We could probably redo this later if it becomes a uh, troubling curve. Working on a round city. It was gray. The kitties, the kitties is napping. I guess I could show you the Mamba, but he's in a bad spot. So you can't really see him. So if I turn on the cam, he's behind the pillow. So if I have it on ground level, you can't even see him because he's behind the pillow. But if I put the camera up, you see him hiding behind it. The mom is just napping today, doing his thing. So we're letting him, uh, you know, just kind of chill out. She's got a city. She can run circles around. Nice. Nice, nice. That sounds like a fun time, I guess. If you like running around in circles. Well, that's awesome, awesome. Circle cities are always fun. Oh, I love it. Bomb is the best. Mamba is easily the best kitty cat of all time. All right, so we're just going to make a makeshift curved street because it's going to be a better grid design, I think, than uh, anything else. Ah, I see this right here. The residents are dizzy like the mayor. Yo, I see you over there, Mia. Hey, man. 
I will say this. When you're driving in a circle, you don't get as dizzy, I found. I don't know if we have anyone that could confirm or deny that, but that's at least what I believe is how that works. Hmm. So if I go like this, I force myself here, but we don't get a good angle. Okay, that sucks. Unless I delete the back street, but then I wouldn't like this connection. It'd be a bad connection. Right? It makes sense. It makes sense. It's, okay, so we delete this, and then we delete that. And then we do a 5 here. That's an 80. Oh, I wouldn't want that. I would be able to extend the street out, though. I feel like that would be a bad shot. Yeah, this is also tough. This is just a bad angle. But this is arguably one of the better angles we could take. I guess we could delete this. And have a better angle. So this, not like that. Kind of like that. It's a little bit taller. Alright, I think that's going to be fine. I think that's going to be fine. Cheesy sus. Seems legit. Why is it sus, man? Alright, we're going to use a 9 point. Free draw? Wait, what? What do you mean, Mia? I'm a new guy trying to get into City Skyline. Sell me this game. Uh, do you like cities? Do you like being the mayor? Do you like having control of the city? Do you like watching the cars move, getting correctly into the correct lane, navigating through the traffic, and somehow this kind of satisfies something within me? Seeing all the cars filter out properly, merge, split, do whatever it is they need to do, and do it flawlessly. That's the major selling point for me. I like watching the cars move sometimes. I don't know what it is, cheesy sus, but uh, something about watching the cars move and navigate, it's very satisfying to me. Now, of course, in the game of City Skylines, it's beyond just that. You actually have full control of the game, and you have the ability of making a beautiful city. You could replicate realistic ones. You could make a uh, futuristic city, medieval city. There's a lot of ways for you to do things like that. I'm going for a modern city design, more realistic in our today's world. And in the game of City Skylines, this is the actual best game on the market when it comes to city building. So of course, if you are looking for a city builder, if you're looking for a game that can allow you to tap into your creative side to build something amazing, build something from your dreams, build something from where you live, City Skylines is going to be actually the only game that allows you to do that. It's going to be a combination of how developed the game is, the amount of mods and assets you have at your fingertips. However, I only recommend getting the game for the PC and specifically on Steam. Epic Games, I would not recommend because you don't get the mod workshop from Steam. And if you get it on console, it's the same problem. So I will say watch out for that. Now that being said, this is the best city builder game on the market when it comes to designing, managing, and creating a city. In regards to realistic or not, that really doesn't matter. This is still the best game on the market. Now of course, that being said, this is only really for people that enjoy building cities. If you've never played a Sim City before, if you don't like watching the cars move, if you don't care about if a house that's on fire gets a fire truck delivered on time so that the house doesn't burn down, maybe this game isn't for you. But if you do have a little bit of, uh, hey, I need that to be perfect. Hey, I need this, I need that. But uh, I will say that if you do like city building, this game is uh, the best one out there. If not, though, that's perfectly fine. The game's not for everybody. Localhost. Oh, man. How you doing, Localhost? I hope you're, uh... I hope it's not that bad. I know it's, uh, pretty tough, though. You doing all right over there, Localhost? 
It's tough time sometimes. I could do a minor curve here. Ah, man. I think this would have been better like that. To get the Y. Oh, that, that's actually, yeah. That might be the play. Okay, so let me delete this. Hope it's okay to ask another question. Of course. A lot of players like their big roads with a bunch of trees, partially to reduce noise, but also for the looks. But I don't see any trees around yours. Is that something you plan on doing later, or would you prefer it without trees? So the thing is, is actually because of my road choice. That's actually why. You're right. The trees are nice. It's always good to have. I actually don't have the option of putting trees on my island, and that's because of the asset choice. I instead... So basically, the roads I have are roads that have the option left turn, right? So you could turn in like that. And this is something I really wanted. However, by choosing to get this road, I don't get trees. And that's due to the road asset. This is my road asset. It's a two lane, two wide median with a concrete round in the middle. And for the most part, it's because they don't make this type of road because this road is the same asset as my three lane. So if I were to showcase it, I could do that. And then I have a three lane version of the same thing that allows me to, well, if I switch that, you know, get a dedicated left turn. So I sacrifice trees in order for this option. Yo, I see you over there, local host. Dude, that's tough, man. Hope everything works out. But yeah, man, that's... It's a bad predicament right now, man. It's tough. And it's, it's really just not your fault. Like, you didn't, you didn't choose for any of this. It just kind of happened, man. It seems really interesting. You're hired. Now, I'm a guy who likes to own DLCs, but I gotta know, do I need DLCs to enhance my game experience to the max? Yes but you never want to get them from the get-go. So if you want to enhance your experience to the max, it depends which direction you want to go. That being said, the DLCs do provide some mechanics and gameplay that is unique to the DLC. And before you get all the DLCs, I need to explain to you, um, do you know who publishes this game? Cheesy sus? The publisher of this game is Paradox Interactive. Do you know what they're known for when it comes to the company? Hey, Kem Jr. Hold up. It's been a long time, Kem. Is that you? I feel like I've seen you before like six months ago. No, you came from Yumble's Raid. My bad. That was last month. <laughs> it's a different Kem. It's a different cam. But hello, hello. Thanks so much for the tier one. Enjoy the emotes, D20 dice and free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. But yo, man, thank you so much for the support. How are you today, Cam? Cam Jr. 67. I see you, I see you. Say my name. No, no, no. Cam Jr., Miss Chemical Stairs. <laughs> Someone has the, uh, sounds like the first couple letters of your name. Atomic Pad, I see you over there with DLC policy. But yo, Kem, if you have any questions about what we're doing, feel free to let me know. As I would be happy to help out. Right now, just working on a little bit of a natural declining highway. As you can see, it's going downhill. And then going into an interchange that connects to a harbor. We're working on a backside small road setup to uh, go down to the same area. And we're trying to make it seem natural. Now we're working on the grid back here to connect everything all together. But uh, that's what's up right now, man. Cool, cool, cool. What's up? Other cam? A hey, stuffed from dinner. What you have for dinner, dude? All right. So what version intersection marking tool? Renewable or stable? What roads are you using? Uh, intersection marking tool. I am not sure. I don't know which version this is. I'm. Can I tell from here? I might have to go to my options. Uh, they don't tell me. It says something here, one point something. 
Did you ever get that area for Crystal Golem? I believe I did, but I never got a name for it. So it's there. I just don't have a name. And then uh, Cheesy Sus, I'm very sorry. I got I got sidelines by the uh, by the sub. So let me answer your question. <laughs> I was I was answering it, and then halfway I just kind of stopped. So when when it comes to the DLC, you don't need it. And although I do recommend getting it if you want to get a little bit more deeper into the game, at the beginning of the game when you're just getting into it, I do not recommend getting a single DLC. And the reason why is that although it enhances gameplay, and it does it so in that it's in tune everything in the game, I don't recommend it because each DLC that the game has, and because it's Paradox Interactive, you have at least 10 DLC options. They are all different. And it depends on the style of play you're actually going to be playing. When it comes to city skylines, how I said everything earlier about how you manage a city and design a city, it also comes down to play style. Different people that play this game have a lot of different interests. And what I mean by that is, when I play this game, I might be the person that plays it the most unique compared to everyone else. And that's because of how I approach the game, how I think about things, how I work certain things out, and how I have a little bit of a maybe more active creativity imagination for the road layouts and city layouts. And it also doesn't help that I spend nights sometimes going on to Google Earth, Google Maps, and just looking at road layouts, looking at how some, some of the cities do their you know, highway intersections, looking at what are the options, what the people do, what they like to do, designs that are popular. And I'll look from city to city to kind of get a feel. And that way, like when I do road layouts, they seem more realistic. And that's just something I like to do. Now with that in mind, that means that I play very much on a macro level. Macro meaning that I like zooming out, looking at the overall shapes of my grids, looking at my networks for my highways and for my roads, so that I have a very efficient network. And that's because I try to have my traffic flow percentage at max max is 95 percent you actually can't go above 95 percent so because of that 95 is the max i'm at 94 i'm doing amazing so that's how i play the game now that being said there's a lot of different ways to play the game one of the ways to play the game is how i said is the macro level another way to play the game is highly detailed in this game we have what's called assets these assets you could actually go into the game and look for something like this. And these are all the individual houses. You could actually go in and specifically pick out certain assets that you want. And some people that are hyper detailers will go into the game, specifically pick out the specific apartments or building types that they want. And they know how to look it up in the menu. And they will build like a block that's like depending on the the person that's detailing you might have one that does like a small block like this right and they'll make everything inside look as real as possible make it so that you know it looks like an active city the citizens walk in the street you'll have like a denny's next to like a supermarket they'll have a parking lot in, in the back and it'll look like a real plaza and they'll spend hours on it making it so that they could make it seem as they have it in their neighborhood, right? So that's hyper detailing. Now, some people will try to do that as well and apply both the macro level and the hyper detailing. So they'll go in and do hyper detailed small areas, but not like every small area. And by doing that, they'll have a, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now, of course, there are upsides and downsides to doing each one of those if you do macro level like i do this is the most resource less intensive that made no sense this is the least resource intensive uh play style as i play with very few mods and very few assets this allows you to kind of just play the game have your population do your road networking and you learn more about how to uh deal with cars this way now, if you do the hyper detailing, you want the realism factor. That's usually going to be the main attractive point for you. And depending on if you want to do hyper detailing to a large degree, so the scale of your detailing, you could do it as large as this city or as small as the block I drew out earlier. If you do large detailing, you're going to need a very heavy future-proofed PC. 
The thing about this game is that even though it's the best game on the market, it is also the most inefficient engine known to man. It's single threaded. So if you know what that means, that means that even if you're running a Ryzen 7 with I don't even know how many cores you have, you're only using one core. If you have uh, a Ryzen PC, you typically kind of just get bodied until, uh, you know, you start over in a new city. <laughs> because basically what happens is, is that the game gets so heavy and because it's inefficiently coded and it's single threaded, what happens is, is that at a certain point of your game, your, your game gets so heavy that you can't simulate anymore. Your cars, when you simulate 1x speed, 2x speed, and 3x speed, you won't notice the difference in speed anymore. You're gonna get uh, sudden chugs of the game where you get like laggy bits, where you're moving your camera lags, FPS drops. That's very possible, and it happens way more often than you believe. And that's because of the game still only using one core of your PC. So because of that, if you want to do the hyper decaling on a macro scale, you're going to need a PC from this year. You're probably going to want a uh, top end uh, PC with the most amount of juice you could get. So you're probably looking at Intel processors. And then because you're looking for top end number and not the amount of cores, the scale of which you look at your CPU is a little bit different. Now, once you get that in mind, you're also going to need to get 32 gigs of RAM. If you don't get 32 gigs of RAM, you're going to run into the same issues I just, ex I just explained. The mods and assets are worse than Google Chrome in how much memory they actually want to eat constantly. So you're going to need a lot of RAM. So if you want to do hyper detailing and want to do macro scale, so you do a hyper detailed large city, you're going to need a computer from this year or last year of technology that came out so ddr4 32 gigs of ram ssd does not help you here because everything is off of your cpu or your ram um having more virtual memory could be nice but you you know you plateau on that very easily and that being said that's three different play styles the dlcs are catered to one of those three play styles so if you're looking at a macro level city like i do the DLC that helps me out the most is Mass Transit. And that's because Mass Transit gave me a lot of new roads, specifically highway roads. So I get the two-way highway, I get the two-lane highway, I get the four-lane highway. I also get some of the other roads as well, and it's very beneficial for me to use those. Not only that, I get a couple of public transit options too. Right, And depending on which DLC you get, there's different mechanics added in, different things added in. If you want to look at hyper detailing, there is a DLC called Park Life, and I have it. Park Life allows you to make a customized park. So to give you an example, I could basically do something like this. This is going to be a park area. I come in with a city park. I'm going to make my entrance right here. And then we're going to have some plazas inside. I'll have a plaza on the outside before going in. And then I'm going to set up a random road network. So freeform like that, like that, like that. And then this straight shots out to here. So we get a straight shot. So this could be our park. And then we'll just come in with some trees. And depending on your tree options, you could do uh, very nice looking trees or very bad looking ones. We're going to come in with a couple of these. Actually, let me do this and remove the existing palm trees because it doesn't fit the theme. And then we'll come in with some of the uh, trees like that. Come in with the larger ones. Some of these. Some of the small ones. And then we'll come in with this, some more of the small trees to kind of fill it in a little bit more. Some of the shorter trees on the outside edge because of how the tree density actually matters. And then it's kind of park. Now we come back into here and we can put in things like a, uh, you know, put a park info booth. You, you might need a map because you might get lost. You could zone that on the pedestrian pathway put a little bit of a uh, restroom right here because people need to pee, whatever. 
and this is our park. You come in from the entrance, the citizens will walk to it and walk around in the park, and they get entertainment value out of this. So this is very quickly what I mean by detail. I individually placed everything here in the way I want it to. So you can make something very realistic looking or something very, uh, you know, imaginative, like, you know, the futuristic floating cars, flying, flying everything. Maybe you might even have a flying park, right? Who knows? The park comes to you. You pay for it. The park parks itself in front of your house and just walk outside. Who knows? Right? Maybe that's the future. But that's detailing in a certain degree. And the Park Life DLC helps out with that, if that makes sense. So because you get to individually place everything like that, that DLC is more catered towards the detailers. You could argue that for campus as well. As the campus is the same feature, you just paint an area as a campus. And then once you're ready, you could build your campus in the area, depending on what type of campus you want, whether you want liberal arts, a trade school, or maybe even a university. And then you'll place the buildings out where they need to be, make your own little campus, and then that's detailing as well. So it depends on what you want to do, which is why I would recommend to play the game first so that you can have a feel for what you enjoy, and then you could pick and choose the DLCs that you want to play first. Now, that being said, I want you to do this because this game goes on sale four times a year. Your base game value of $30, your DLCs that are at $10 to $15 a piece, they go on sale 75% off four times a year. So I recommend because the sheer number of DLCs you have and the fact that the next sale is coming in because summer is around the corner, I believe you should wait for it. And if you're waiting, you could scoop up the DLC, uh, the base game first. You could probably find it on sale somewhere for like $7. And then play that, find what you enjoy, and then kind of look at the DLCs on what you want to grab. If you do have a general idea of the play style that you want to learn how to play and gravitate towards, we can help you out with that, with DLC recommendations, mod recommendations, but 100%, it's going to be up to you. Right at the end of the day, play the way that you want to enjoy. And that's that's kind of the rant. <laughs> hey, hey, Golid, sorry, man, you came in and went immediately to lurk. I'm very sorry. I was in a rant, my dude. If you're still here, if you hear me, I apologize and hope you're having a nice Mondays. We'll see you next time, dude. Sorry for the, uh, you know, me being kind of a bum. All right, I'm gonna take this angle and then I got to terraform this. And then we redo the curve. Serema, Seremanwe. What mod creates the search bar? Find it too. Yep. This is find it. It allows you to search bar everything. You could also, instead of search barring, you could just click the tabs to look for specifics. There's also a filter box. So I could look for, you know, something with a building height, specific DLCs, specific assets, or specific tags. It's it's really nice to have. I recommend getting Find It for everyone that uh, plays this game. If you are trying to get your feet wet with learning how to detail, Find It might be the first mod you want to check out. Because what this allows you to do is tap into the game's existing asset files. Meaning that you don't have to download anything new. You could use what's already in the game to your advantage at no additional cost to you. Which is why I would recommend that. Highly recommend. Alright, so the zoning and the spacing is far enough away that I could keep that. Cool. Thank you, thank you, Miss Chemical Stairs, for holding it down while I was uh, going through one of my rants. They don't think it'd be like it is, man, but it do. And you know what? It really do be like that sometimes. All right, this is a 180, 180. I'm honestly uh, leaning into the medieval you were talking about earlier. Ah, so one of the things about this game that you also have access to is themes. Um, Right now in the base game, you don't have a lot of options, but there are a lot of options on the modded workshop. And that's where the building assets come into play. As I said before, you have building assets and skins like this, right? The shape of the house, it's basically just right here, right? 
this is the uh, building right here for this house. It's a two by two, but the lot size is a two by four. This building, you could actually build individually if that's what you want to look for. Now, the thing is, is that all the buildings are just on colored lots. You could actually download a set of mods so that you could change the skin of the building. The building will still act the same. However, the building on the outside just looks a little bit different. In this game, you have the option of doing two styles from the get-go. What is this? What is this? What was that lag? That was the harbor. Oh no, the Congo line of harbor people. That's gonna cause some lag, huh? Okay. So we gotta get that second outlet probably. I'll get that soon. So what we could do in this game is color an area. And with the district tool, I could choose, let's say this row of housing. And what I could do with this is click on the district and look for a district style. By default, you only have two styles. The default modern style that you could see here, which is kind of like American. And then we have the European style. European suburbia and European, it's the same thing. And once you do this, the buildings are going to collapse. Did I, did I, there we go. And when they rebuild, they're going to come in with a European theme. So I don't have anything that's medieval theme, but I have seen people do like crazy builds like that. Now I will say this, even though there is the medieval assets, it's going to be hard to find a entire city be medieval because it's modern medieval. It's how it's going to work because you could reskin everything. But if you have like a medical clinic, if you have a hospital, you, you don't have that in the medieval time eras, <laughs> right? But you're going to have to build it. Otherwise, your citizens are going to get sick and die. So you're going to have to like find assets that it's going to be like, oh, this is a medieval medicine hut. I don't know. And that might be a little bit tough. Because you could do it for the buildings, for where the people live, where the people shop, and where the people work. That's going to be where the majority of these assets are going to be for. However, you're not going to get it for the services. So things like schools. You're not going to be able to find like a medieval school, probably. That might be what might be tough. These services. So like police, you might be able to find. That makes sense. A firehouse? Like, are you going to have a medieval fire truck? That'd be kind of uh, kind of tight. <laughs> you have a guy like just pumping water on the other side. And a guy with like a wooden hose spraying water. I don't know. But that would be the thing. So you can see now that my assets here are European. And they have that European style where you're wall to wall with your neighbor. And you have like no space in between. So that's kind of like the short and dense European setup that you would have. So that's just by changing up the district styles. So you do have that. You might be able to find a district style for the... Uh, medieval stuff but this district style only works for the zonables anything that you plop down that's a service so any one of the power generators uh any one of the medical clinics or hospitals any one of the fire departments or police departments they're gonna look the way they look so that's gonna be kind of the uh issue you might run into in terms of consistency all right let me delete this I gotta bring back my American districts. It looks out of place having the European assets right there. But yeah, hopefully that helps out. All right, so we got that. I wanted this to be a Y. Now here to here is a two twenty. I wanted that. Ah, that would have been amazing if I could do that. But I don't think I actually do that at all. All right, so I don't want this connection. Now I want this. Oh, I know what I'll do. Oh, this is going to be sick. Okay, so we do it here. That's a 120. And that's a here as well. All right, so this should be easy. So let me do the marker on the other side. More realistic. Uh, let me pull this out by six first. I'm going to be doing what's called an S-curve. So we take this, 120, that's here, 120, that's here, so here to here, 
Ooh. Here to here and then here to here. I'll take it. It should be fine. The rough estimates are rounding. So that's, I think, that's what's happening. I think we make an S curve. And then we do that for uh, filling out the area. Now it does get away right here, but I think that's fine. Have a little bit of a uh, space for maybe one of the larger buildings, like the high school. Maybe the university could be right here. It takes up some of the dead space that's behind uh, the streets. I like that connection though. We have the roadside connection and then it flares out to the outside. Also take the round to uh, exit out this way. This comes out that way. I think what we do here though is kind of unique because I think I could do this now. We pull this out by 11 and then I could pull out a perpendicular road and do a uh, minor curve here. Like here to here and have that be a connection. And then we fill this out a lot better. Like this is a very good connection if we were to do something like this. Now, if I were to work it backwards, I would pull it from there. Oh, the grid's broke. Uh, that means I pull it this way. And then I do it here. Yeah, that means the grid only breaks on this end now. So if I were to do it like that, because of how the spacing would have worked, this actually didn't work out that well. So I actually need to push this out more to this side. So it would be something like this. And that breaks the grid, but I should be able to get that. And then if I were to pull the parallel line. So this is a six. And then we have a midpoint rule. 180, 160. Let's make it a 120, so that's a 40. And then that's a 60. And then this should be a 120 setup. And then we get the six point curve. Simple setup. Now over here though, this is a 280. I needed that to be a 320 for me to get this. That would have been nice, but we don't get that. Instead... Ah, yes. If I want this to be a curve, I have to make this curve larger. As them bees the rules. Okay. Instead, I might want to make something weird happen. Take this pocket and make it to like a park. I also could do something like this. Curve that out, but you see the overlapping zone. I don't. I wouldn't want that. I could push this down a little bit more. Maybe on this side. See, that works, but that curve looks really bad. It works, but the curve looks really bad. So maybe I don't do this. There's always the option of doing this and having that go into the middle. Which is a 8100. That's actually respectable. Now I could move this one tile closer. So instead of here, I move that down. This is a 11 and then a 5. In theory, this is an 8080. Yep, so this would be my curve. And then I could continue this way. Oh, shit. And then I would try to make a curve from here to here. Oh, man. Now, instead, I could also bop this this way. Hmm. And we go something like this. This doesn't really work though, right? We would have to curve that segment. It would look kind of nice though. I would say that. If I was able to curve it. So this is a 160, 140. Okay, okay. So this is not properly spaced still. So let me do it like this. Okay, let me delete that. Let me have that, have that. 
80, 120, that's a 40. We go for the curve. All right, so pro tip, if you guys have a lot of dotted lines like this, look for the lines that are lit up. You could see which lines you're actually hovering over by which lines are lit up. So right now, this line and that line are lit up. If I were to change that, it changes which node I'm snapping to. So you want to look at the lit up lines to see if you got the right one or not. Okay, well, this is a 5. 140, 140, I'll take that. There we go. All right, this is kind of jank, so I'll delete that. And I got a great idea. I can line this up now, so this hugs properly. So you, you have a perfect hug right here. There we go. That's nice. That curves into here. And then this flares out to there. Dude, that's nice, dude. That's actually really nice. Now, I could also do this now. If I want it. I might have to redo this curve, though, as a result. I think I will, because that's such a good grid pattern. Okay, so I would have to delete that. So, marker here. I want this to be a 6. Uh, I want this to be a slight curve. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I guess that depends on the angle. So this lines up to here. We're not going to pull anything off of that. Having that be a straight is kind of arbitrary. So we're going to put a marker. 120. It's like that. So it's here. And then it's here. Alright, so I take this because earlier, what what actually hurt me was me not getting the pedestrian pathing right here. The grid here was too close, so I'll do it this way so that I get the path in the middle still. That also means I probably need to push back the terrain though. Like right here, yeah. So take this height, we have to push that in. Because I want the zoning on the side, 100%. And that was the sacrifice we had to make. Alright, that's enough spacing. We will massage up the top. So the hill doesn't look too bad. There is a hill there though. I'm happy with this design. Okay, cool. So from here, we could keep going out. I don't think we should. I do want to keep it like that. So that was this side. So now this side, I probably do want to go kind of diagonal like that and then curve into this part. So I delete this and that. This part I might take still. It depends on what we want to do. I could also just draw a straight line. That works. And that's really fair because because of how we could just easily strip off uh, six units to do a dedicated curve. That would actually make me want to redo that as well. Let's actually try that. It looks pretty good. There's nothing about this that I'm, you know, too worried about. Push that back slightly. Okay, so from here, the setup is 5. And then this is a 120. Same thing on this side. The 120, and then the 120. So we should get this, right? In every every case. We get the one... Okay, that rounded up. I'll take that. The rounding is happening strongly today. Don't know what's going on. Okay, so now this is a problem. Because now I need to redo that. This is probably going to be a right side oriented. This probably comes up from here. And this is a very minor curve. I see now. 
I see, I see. So I would want this a little bit larger in order to have this pull off in the same setup. Right? So I would lose a little bit of the straight portion. Or, huh, don't do that, do this line to be a little bit longer. Yeah, 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 okay. So that, that, so we work it backwards like we did the other side. So we do it here, find the midpoint, light up lines, 140, 180. So we, we want to do the six point. So that's a 60. That's technically, I need to go out to here. All right, and then this should be a 120, 120. Nice. And then we uh, trim the bottom accordingly. I think this works. So now we get the perfect setup. We get the one tile hug, which is what we want. Now this part's interesting. I think instead of connecting back into here, I do a weird setup. The weird setup, I think it's going to look like this. Oh, this doesn't work. It's going to have to look like that. Okay. So that means... They gave that to me? Is this a meme? They actually gave that to me. Alright, so... The midpoint here is 180, 240. So I do pull this out by 60. Now the hook curve for this looks a little bit better. It's more even. I didn't want that connected. Nice. So it's a little bit chank. We have a little bit of open space. But I don't honestly mind. This is really not bad. It's a more unique design. This flares out. I get a little bit of dead space. This being a four-way cross at the end, I think it's fine. Since it's at the end of the city, I can't see that hurting me too bad. Now, the only problem with this is that the rest of this is still a grid. We just literally did this curve, aligned up a little bit better. I could push in the hillside here in a little bit, fill out some trees right there. I think that's going to work. Now, this part that I think we might want to do is here to here. We won't go into this. Probably want to be an overpass, right? That's what I'm thinking I'm going to want. I feel like this is necessary. And then I kind of keep it box grid on the side because I don't want to zone too much on the side. The terrain, I think it's fine for the most part. Yeah. I think this is going to be our grid. All right, so let's get our upgrades in. Upgrade the dirt roads to proper ones. This is going to be the four lane upgrade. Have this just work into here. And then we get our one ways. Clockwise? Wait, 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 wait. Counterclockwise. Yeah, 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 yeah. You make rights. You make a right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this was a two way setup. For now, this is two way. This is not going to stay there. More or less, we could get rid of the middle. We'll do that later. And then, yes. So on this side, we weren't going to have the large road anymore. So this was going to look weird. If that's the case, shouldn't I have something like this? To kind of signify the end of it. Having a street that actually straight shots through, I think hurts me. I will delete that then. This is not bad. The curvature on the outside of the setup, I think, gives it a lot of character. I think it's not bad at all. And then this is potentially the street that goes out into this hill, where we might have a park. It's a little bit uphill, so I'm thinking about that. All right, so I think this is ready. Everything here is going to be upgraded. And then we work on the pipelines. All 
All right, and the one ways. Cool, cool. All right, so this one should have went out to here. Oh, the the terraforming bumped up the the pipe to make it look weird. All right, let me delete that and go like this. So now it's a little bit flat. Oh, this side looks kind of jank. Flat pipes, baby. Gotta have them. Alright, so now the pipeline setup. Okay, so we have a roundabout. Then we have here. Turn off the dots. Gotta have the pipelines. This is probably gonna be necessary as well. There we go. Not bad, not bad. Alright, so now we'll pipe out this area. We'll try to keep it as clean as possible. It looks like I already know how I want to do this. I go here, here, here. Here, here. Oh, that's gross. I don't get that spot. Can I do this then? It works? Okay, I, I take that. And then I disconnect this connection and have this go into that pipeline. That way it's a little bit cleaner looking. Guys, if you don't know me, I like lining up my pipes perfectly underneath the roads, and I will take my time to do this. <laughs> if you guys don't believe me, I can show you the rest of the city. That's exactly like that. We have all of our pipes underneath the roads, and we try to make it look kind of cool. Best pipes in the business. Y'all know what it is, man. I be bending my pipes along the uh, grid line all the time. All right, so now that means this pipeline, I think, has to work a certain way. I This is weird. So I have to go out this way, I'm thinking. Because I'm not covering that side of the grid. Which means I have to go like this. And that means, of course, this is also going to be a thing. Now, from here, I think this is where it gets weird. I go this way, this way, curl back around, and then go around this way to go down to come back around. I think I lose a little bit of here though, because if I do this, and then I do that, yeah, there's there's something in the middle I don't get. Ah, <sighs> oh, that's such a pain. I hate how it's like that. I was so close. This goes over to here. This goes over to here. It would have been perfect. I still might do it. I still might do it. And then we'll just have to live with uh, some of the blemishes. I could always adjust the road to give me the exact crossover I need as well. I don't know if I want to do that though. Okay, okay. Uh, 
that comes in. That means this goes this way, that way, here, here, here. Yep. Ah, man. They don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. So I could cut this into two streets in the middle, and that's all I would actually need. <sighs> I could also just pull up the pipeline on one side. That was almost immaculate, though. You see how this long pipeline has no bumps in it? We were so close. We were so close. Alright, we'll have to pull it from the side. Feels bad. Alright, so that area is done. Cool, cool. Good to start expanding out. I actually don't need, uh, don't think I need to do that yet. I do want to continue the pipeline into the harbor. Though. This might be the fastest way to get a pipeline over to here, because otherwise I'm following the, the freeway. <laughs> that might be tough. That's probably not a good time. Alright, alright, that comes in, it does its thing. This goes out to here. I do remember me having to go up here. And then we curve into the harbor. Hello? There we go. All right, all right. Not bad, not bad. Of course, guys, if you guys followed me today, I am sorry that there was no notification just for you guys to know. I know that not everyone's going to hear this, but the people that do, I've gotten uh, bot rated before, and you get a thousand followers, and then they all unfollow immediately. So you get a thousand pop-ups of the uh, follower notification. So as a result, we have to turn that off. That was a long time ago, but I still have it off since then. <laughs> but yeah, that's the reason why if you don't hear a no uh, follow notification, you don't see one, that's because it's off right now. But I do appreciate everyone that's followed. Thank you so much, guys. If you guys have any questions to ask, feel free to uh, ask away, as I would uh, be happy to help. No worries. If you're worried about me being uh, annoyed by the questions, don't worry, man. I'm happy to help out any and all the uh, new players. Especially if you need help with the game, ask away, man. Don't think that you have a bad question. Don't think that whatever you may ask is a... Uh, oh, it's so such a stupid question. He you know be annoyed to answer no man there's there's always new players new blood and sometimes you think something is a, a bad question it might be the same thing someone else wants to ask right so if you guys do have them ask away as i would be happy to help only if you guys have them though <laughs> don't force the questions like hey legit uh how old is mamba <laughs> that's fine too i'm just saying though you know Cricket Kyle, Hellandier, Cheesy Sus, all of those guys over there. I see you guys, man. Ask me anything. Yup, yup, yup. I'd be happy to help you guys out if you guys need it. Alright, so I haven't adjusted my round yet. And I think I'll do that later. I need to fence this out right now. The uh, zoning on the side, it, it kind of sucks from time to time. So we need to fix it. Too high. Angles too strong. Hmm. How to build a roundabout. You click road, you click interchange, you click roundabout, you click again, get a roundabout. Bam, easy. Got him, I guess. I don't know. Local host, that help, man? 
<laughs> that helped local host. Asking for a friend. Don't know if it did enough. Okay, thanks. Nice, we did it. Oh, that's right. I have I have anarchy now. I completely forgot. Yeah, so I gotta turn that on. Uh, control A and Control P. So I need prop anarchy on. Yes. Okay. I forgot about this. So there's a strategy that I used to do. Not used to do, but uh, well, yeah. In the old days, the strategy was we would build pedestrian pathways on the edge, right? But the problem was, was that when you have a pedestrian pathway on the edge, you get this ugly setup with the dots. So I stopped doing that and I started doing fences because it fences, there's no like pathing. You just get rid of the zoning and it's clean looking. Now, problem is when you're doing this fence strand around the roundabout without the add on move it, you kind of have an issue with having a perfect setup. So I think I'm going to be able to do this now, right? Yeah, I'm going to basically go like this. And I'm, I'm going to try the hut. Oh, I could do it like this. Yeah, and try to hug everything so that the, uh, the road is halfway underneath. Now, I could do it like this. Oh, look at that. So it just it just looks like it's a wider sidewalk. It works. It works. So the sidewalk's a little bit thicker. You know, they spilled a little bit of extra concrete on it sometimes. They don't think it be like it is, but it do. And then we do that around the outside. So then it kind of makes it cleaner looking at the very least. Hey, there we go. do that do that dude look at that the grid's a lot smoother looking now all right this one's where it's tough because i don't have a middle node so i kind of have to do it like that not bad there we go i like this idea <laughs> Now, the only problem is if they start walking because of where the pedestrians is. Thanks to Anarchy mod, yeah. I, I don't typically play with Anarchy, but when I do, I break the shit out of the game. One thing's weird, though. I tried to use Anarchy earlier, and it didn't work. I had a curve that even with Anarchy on, the game did not let me uh, actually do it. So I thought that was kind of weird, but hey, it is what it is. Anarchy is not all powerful. Okay, it's looking like we need shops. Okay, I got you guys. I got you guys. We gotta have shops, man. So four, five, wait, wait. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's normally the distribution. Four gap, ten gap, four. And then we leave that open. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fair. Now I could put a backside path from here to here. We wouldn't have shopping on that. It'd be on the main street only. And then of course, it looks like I do need shops here. They have huge demand, so I might as well give it to them. Good night, watch it later, bro. Yo, Mordex, I didn't even see you pop in. Good to see you, Mordex. Hope you had a good Mondays. But hey, have a good night, man. We'll see you next time. Thanks for popping in, dude. Damn, did I miss Mordex's message today? I didn't see him say hi. Maybe I missed it. Yo, feels bad, man. When, that, when I miss chat messages, that's a feels bad, man moment. I never mean to miss chat messages, you guys. No, all good, man. Appreciate the lurks. But if you popped it and said hi, I, I think I might have missed it. That's what I'm, I'm, you know, worried about. If you came and didn't say anything, hey, I, I, I you know, that I, I, you know, that, that, that is what it is. But if you did come in to say hi, feels bad, man. No worries though, Mordex. Appreciate the lurks, man. I know you gotta take care of business. It's cool my wife ignores me too. Guys, if you guys didn't know, I'm married to Mordex. 
<laughs> Apparently, because uh, I I married him and then I ignored him. Feels bad. <laughs> just memeing, just memeing. I see you over them more decks. Yo, man, I gotta remember, happy wife, happy life, man. All right, my demand is shot. That means they're waiting for me to kind of just have the people move in. So I should start developing another area. Okay. If that's the case, I might start working on the getting down to this area. I wanted this to be the main roundabout and then down to the proper beach area. All right, let's do a couple of massaging strats that I believe I needed to do here. Actually, hmm. Actually, yeah, let me let me massage it in first. We'll do a 100. By massaging this in like this, it feels more natural. Because it's like grounded off of the top instead of having like a straight cut. It's basically the difference between cutting straight lines and cutting at a curve. Just because just I want to round off the top of the beach line. Yeah, it's smoother now. There's there's a transition. Because before I had something like, like this. It kind of goes up and then it goes flat. I kind of wanted to smooth this out. All right, now from that, we know the bottom's gonna be the beach and we're gonna extend out the middle portion. So I want to have, I need to find straight lines. I think this is pretty good. And have a good amount of spacing from it. Alright, so we're finding out a line right here, trying to line up so the edge of this is trying to be as parallel as we can. And then we'll basically connect the segments and get a edge on the beach. Since I'm able to zone on both sides flat, that's actually enough space for the beach to be a beach. And then we'll extend out the midsection a little bit out further. I think that's going to be what I'm going to want. So I do want this. And by having it be parallel, we get a good set. Now we look for the midpoint rule, basically find the midpoint. 460, 320. Uh, let's go for the 320. So 460, 320, that's what, 140. And then we see if this is a good curve. We could see that this is already curving in, so I probably do take this. As is this continued straight, I'd pull this out a little bit more. Now we do the same thing over here. So the midpoint here is a 320, 340. It's a very subtle line. I'll go out with the 300. No, let's go with the, no, nah, let's go with 300. So this is a subtle extension. And then this is a 40. Three hundred, three hundred. not bad. 14, 15, that's my 300. Now we do the same thing over here. 340, 320, it's the same line. We'll do the same 300 then. So this pops out plus one. That goes out to here. And this is a plus two. 300, 300, not bad. And then this one's gonna be tough. Uh, let's see. I have to extend this out from the get-go. There's no way that I don't. And then this is a 320, 460. 140, that's very close. But then they probably give me a really good curve as a result. Yeah, that's not bad. 
So we could see where the top of the setup needs to go out into. I could probably pull this out. Straight line. And then have the uh, edge come out like this. So this is low too. Alright, so we take the sign. 78. Whoa, that is weak. Start pushing this out. So the beach area is just going to be a park. We're not going to actually have zoning down there. And we'll have the zoning in the middle. I might pull out here to a little bit more. So we have more space on the top layer. But by doing it this way, the lowest level is where they have their barbecues, their bonfires, all the things. While the layers on top is going to be a little bit different. Did you know? Post office increases import for industry zone. Uh, here is question how to decrease export if I want to sell goods in city, but sometimes demand commerce zones. But when looking import export, it's more for export. So how is demand works? If it is more export, that means need to sell export train harbor. Is that reason the man of commerce? Okay, so we can talk about that. So you're wondering how does commercial demand impact how the goods work on the import and exports? So here's the thing. Post office that you said increases import and export. That's because of how mail is considered a good, right? Just like how the goods and other supplies are. You'll actually have train, uh, post trucks, you know, driving on here, right? So it, it technically increases demand, but because it adds a new good to be circulated. So that's the reason why. Now, that being said, you, you want to sell goods. Yes. But sometimes the demand of the commercial zones, uh, is more for export. So how is demand works if it is more export? Does that mean need to sell train or harbor? Or is that a reason in the demand of commerce? Okay. So what you're saying is, does your commercial demand work off of how much goods you're selling to the other cities? And the answer to that is no. The commercial demand deals with your population, technically. The more citizens you have, the more demand you have of providing of either a commercial good or service. Technically in this game, um, I don't know if this is hard coded in, if this is 100% true. However, I have noticed that if you put a lot of parks and plazas in your city, you don't have much of a demand for commercial. That being said, it's not like your commercial goes away. It's more so that it's not as constantly maxed out. Now, I don't know if you can supplement the need of commercial by just providing a park. But I believe that to be the case. It's a little bit weird. But that being said, I do not believe demand ties to anything for your commercial outside of your residential. Your goods that you actually make comes from your demand of residential as well. So it would make sense that your commercial demand is also based off of your residential. And now what I mean by that, when your citizens are thinking about moving into the city or not they look at a couple things population they look at the unemployment rate what that means is if you have a low unemployment rate that means you have almost a balanced amount of jobs the lower this number the more balanced it is the higher this number and the highest the number is probably going to go is like 20 percent so usually if it's getting close to double digits, you know that the unemployment rate's getting kind of high. That means that you have more jobs than you have citizens. If you have more jobs than citizens, it's gonna look appealing and increase your residential demand. That being said though, your industry does not increase your demand for residential. That's just one of the things they look at on whether or not they're gonna increase demand or decrease demand. Now, if you want to induce demand which means to artificially create you're actually looking at increasing land value if you look at land value the higher the land value you have overall in your city the more attractive your city is going to look to your citizens 
Now, that being said, your import exports, which is the main point of the question either way, right, does not have to do with commerce. It does not drive it up or down. However, it's on a separate chain that's more reactionary. So that means that if you have a lot of commercial, if you have a little bit of commercial, these numbers don't affect it. If you try to mitigate this number, all it does is reduces the amount of truck traffic leaving the city. So dealing with your imports and exports, mitigating this number is your highway traffic that leaves the map. If that makes sense. But yeah, that's, that's all that is. Hopefully that helps, man. Local host. Okay, so we were working back down to here. Nice, nice. All right, so what I like to do when I get to this point is I like to set up a grid. Plus one. Like that. And then I could terraform everything up to that street. That way it's a little bit safer. Plus one. Plus one. And then here it's plus one. So that goes into that pocket and that goes into here. We could easily make this curve. We could easily do that. And same thing over here. So let me push this out. That goes here plus one. We get the curve. Now we get the terraform. Nice. Okay, so. Oh, that's wrong. I need to take that height and then push it out. How about decrease export just destroyed or what? Oh, if you want to decrease export, what you would do is manage how much industry you have. So technically by destroying it, that works. You could also just uh, change types as well. So what, what I mean by that is you could always destroy your industry so you produce less. If you have the policy, um, this is really good for that. Industrial space planning. If you're importing a lot, you could turn on this policy that doubles your amount of goods produced from your industry so that you can make up the difference. And then if you start exporting because you make too much, you could start removing the district portion from your industrial zone, but not all of it. That way you could slowly just reduce your industry by removing the policy. So first that means you have to make up an area like this, click on it, go to policies, bring up industrial space planning for that specific district. And then as you're trying to reduce your exports, you could just shrink the area. So not everything is doubled up. Uh, outside of that, yeah, you really just have to reduce your industry or grow your city so that anything you export instead gets sold in-house. Outside of that, yeah, you really don't have a choice. Um, you could always try to downgrade the high level zones. Basically the higher level, the zoning area, like this is a four by four. This is uh, 24 workers. This is a 16 worker setup. So a higher level area, it's gonna produce more goods, have more jobs. So you could try to just immediately destroy it so it starts over at level one and then it'll produce less goods but i don't think you have to manage that though it's not somewhat uh not something i think you need to like micromanage i think you can leave it alone it'd be you know kind of just fine hey avenir dutch coming in with the three months on the three months three thank you so much avenir enjoy the emotes d20 dice ad reviewing don't forget that legit sub badge but thank you so much for the support and of course, uh, welcome back to the city. Probably got in at the end of your stream, but I woke up early accidentally. Yay for the three months. Yeah, I'm actually about to wrap up soon. <laughs> Avenue, man, you know my uh, time slot well. I see you over there. Thank you so much for the support, though. And yo, man, nothing wrong with waking up early, dude. I've been trying to wake up early since high school. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Y'all remember how in... uh grade school we would get summer break like i'm not even memeing dude every summer we, we me and the homies we would play world warcraft not every summer in the last couple summers okay it was just the last year we, we would play war to warcraft together 
that's when uh you know in high school when it came out for us well it didn't come out it's just like we we didn't want to get into it and then our, one of my friends got into it and it was fun so we all got into it so what happened was was that um <laughs> we uh would stay up all night playing world of warcraft and for whatever reason i would stay up in college as well and even when i had an office job i would stay up nowadays when i'm a streamer i still stay up <laughs> i've been trying to wake up early man for like the last 10 years like i hate going to sleep early i can't deal with it i don't know if it's hate more so than it's uh i'm antsy at night i don't know but yo man wake up early as pong happy to hear that you got uh to an early start my dude All right, all right. But Avenir, man, just because we're coming in right now, we can show you what we got done. We finished this part of the city. We redid the highway from here all the way down. We built the interchange, feeds out to our harbor area. We settled on how we want to set it up. We have the potential to expand off to the left side right here, which is a beach area. We still have to terraform a little bit of that if we want to get used to it. And then we also made a backside route to go from the elevated highway or highway elevated area turns out and then it goes downhill into the harbor area this is really just to allow uh if someone works in the area they have a quick route i sleep late get up early gifted by jeans to farewell with uh five to six hours of sleep though on free days i sometimes doze off i see over the avenue so i can't do that man I feel like my body's like, oh yeah, you're, you're going to be in sleep debt, but I'm going to collect the debt immediately. <laughs> That's honestly how it feels like, man. If I, if I stay up and I don't get enough sleep. It's like if I, if I were to stay up and then I would try to wake up early, cold shower, coffee, I, I'd eventually just doze off sometime. Some people just aren't built to wake up early. I know, man. I, I feel like... Dude, I've been watching a lot of the motivational videos on YouTube, and they're like, if you want to be rich, you got to wake up early like a billionaire does. They wake up at 5 in the morning. And I'm just like, that's some BS, right? Can I call up Jeff Bezos right now and ask him what time he wakes up? <laughs> and I was like, all right, man, let me try waking up at 5. I tried, I failed. And, you know, rest is history. I still don't wake up at 5. <laughs> they don't think it be like it is, but it do. And it really do be like that sometimes. It feels bad, man. The next international of Dota will be in US. Can't imagine how much a problem is going to have. Some people with visas, maybe mostly in our region. Dude, we'll see, man. Local hosts. We'll see. Because I know some of the online things like uh, Games Done Quick, GDQ. They had it completely online now. I know you can't really do that for the video games because, you know, online, playing on LAN is completely different. But we'll see, man. We'll see how things play out. But yeah, this stuff is mad tough, dude. Previous job, I started work at 6 a.m., got up at 4.45. Oh, yeah, you you grinded that into the system, Avenir. You grinded that in, man. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're going to get that into habits if you do it for that long. You can still make money while the rest of the world sleeps, yes. Try to do a lot of my editing and stuff at night. Not that I try to, but that just happens to be the time that I get to work on it. Alright guys, we're going to be approaching the end of the stream. So guys, if you have any final questions to ask, now would be the time, dude. Let me know if you guys have any questions, anything I could help out. If not, man, we're going to be wrapping up the streams very soon. All right, so we got the interchange done. I might still want to redo the jank highways because from this point on, it's mad jank. But from this point up, it's very clean looking. Now, I still, I think this is going to be set. We'll add some trees here, maybe a park. I don't know if I'll ever attach a city to this side. Maybe we will. I might incorporate the beach. Next time, we're going to have to work on this beach area. Uh, make that a little bit nice looking, the double road setup. And then 
we have this area that's going to be tough due to how we have the uh, valley right here cut. I'm going to have to massage it to make it look a little bit better looking than to just look like I cut out a piece of the pie from the middle, which is kind of sacrilegious. And then we got to terraform this area, which shouldn't be too bad. The industry zone is going to need the most work. I need to add the train line next time. I probably want to start working on the quarry. And I probably want to start getting the uh, level ups for the industry. Then there's this area. I need to massage this part because I don't know how I want to zone this part of the city. And I think I may want to start filling in the downtown properly. And then of course I want to get this beach area situated. A lot of the uh, harbor people visiting and they started getting some public... Damn, look at the people. That's a lot of Congo lines, man. My goodness. A lot of people visiting the area and the harbor. It's not bad. Thank you for streaming. You make Mondays much better. Yo, man, glad to be uh, helping out the days, man. Making your days a little bit better. Yo, man, that means I did my job today. And that's awesome. So I am a multi-millionaire. I am sleeping at 5 a.m. They just wake up. Wait, wait, but you can't say that. Local hosts, that's time zones. <laughs> that's not the same thing. <laughs> and that's not the same thing. Time zones, dude. Technically, I wake up at 5 if you live in Hawaii. I guess. <laughs> Can we make a town on the cliff with the bridge between them and the pie? Oh, you're saying here? Hmm. That'd be mad jank, though. So you want to put a city right here and bridge it across. That's so jank. That's so jank. All right. Wonderful waffle. I am going to say I don't know if I could pull that off. I think if we zone everything that we have, I might approach my simulation limit. If you play this game, you know that at a certain point, the game gets really laggy to the point where you can't play anymore. So since that was never part of the plan, I never actually, you know, uh, accounted for that. Basically, we got to zone this area. We got to zone this area. We got to zone this area. We got to fill out a little bit in between. So as of right now, I have to say no, but if we finish the city and we're not like lagging, you know, all the way <laughs> lagging out and all that, where I can't even simulate 3x speed and see a speed difference, we might add that in. But you're going to have to be here to remind me, man. Probably going to forget because I'm going to be uh, focused on uh, building out the other areas. But yeah, if I don't hit my simulation limit, that could be considered. This place is good for unique building or tourism cluster. It wouldn't be bad. I already have my unique building cluster right here, though. I need to make it a little bit better, though. I got to make it pop out a little bit more. More variety. And of course, guys, that's going to be it for me today. 